Welcome to our Luther's Large Catechism, lesson number 19, A Good Name Publicly Abused. This is for the first week in March for our uh, staff at Green Valley Lutheran School who are taking it as a continuing education. Um, your academic week goes from Wednesday through Tuesday, so it starts on March 3rd. And what we're asking you to do is to watch this video, go to the manual, uh, respond to one of the questions on our uh, group me staff meeting message thread and then also react to one of the other responses of your co-workers. For our members at Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church we are offering this online class um, as a in lieu of the Sunday morning Bible class. We can't have in-person Bible classes because of the the COVID requirements. And so watch this uh, introduction that, that introduces the material. Read the material in the manual that, that you have. If you don't have it, email us and we will get you one, all right? And then go to the church's Facebook page. We have a subgroup, Luther's Large Catechism. You can post answers there, uh, questions, responses, things like that, all right? A good name. Publicly Abused, Lesson Number 19. We are now in the Eighth Commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. And initially, Luther treats this as a uh, legal, in a legal setting, all right? But first of all, in his uh, descending uh, pecking order of things that are precious to us, God, government, our body, our marriage, our possessions. Uh, now we go to our reputation. And Luther makes a, a, a fine point that it is intolerable to live among men in open shame and general contempt. We are such social creatures that we need a good name to hold our head high, to to be involved in people's lives, to go out in society, to be a pariah, to be treated as an outcast, well, that can lead to all sorts of, of bad results. Um, we need our integrity uh, before wife, children, uh, co-workers, neighbors. And so this is the commandment that, that protects our reputation. And... Um, In today, uh, people don't like to offend anyone. And unfortunately, that goes into our court system. Uh, Luther talks about that with the court system, the high and the mighty, the rich and the powerful. A lot of times Luther postulates they are the ones that are the defendants because they are, they are wronging somebody else. And uh, be, because of their position, that judges and jurists can, can look the other way, bend the rules, and, and rule in their favor, uh, whereas the cause of the, the poor man, uh, the oppressed, uh, they are denounced as wrong and often turned over to be punished. And, and this brings out the big idea. The big idea is that Justice gives no thought for offending the powerful. Justice gives no thought for offending the powerful. Luther says both judges and witnesses have to be brave to be able to face that threat that the rich and powerful, if they rule against them, pose for them. They have to be wise, modest, godly people, but above all, Luther says, uh, brave. Because if you rule against the rich and the powerful, you will offend them. And these people are not used to being offended, and they will seek uh, extra legal redress from you. They will seek vengeance from you and make your life miserable. Um, but, but the whole point of judges, godly judges and godly witnesses and jury members too, is to secure the rights of your neighbor. 
to see to it that, that everybody has their rights to them. Uh, not so that on technicalities or shadings of the law that the, the, the wrongdoer has let go. And boy, we see that all the time in our judicial systems today, that they're let go on a technicality or because of this or that or charges are mysteriously dropped for the sake of this or that rich or powerful or influential person. Um, this is in one part the clearest and plainest application of this commandment, Luther says. But then in conclusion he says, but you know, we as Christians, we are falsely accused. Our preachers are considered heretics and apostates, and he's certainly thinking about the treatment the Lutherans have received from the Roman Catholic Church. And then he thinks about the Word of God how the word of God is, is turned into a false witness when people speak falsely about it or bear lies against it or just plain old try to stomp out the truths of the Bible and, and that all who follow the Bible suffer from those same slanders. He says uh, the, the way of the blind world is that she condemns and persecutes the truth and the children of God, yet doesn't consider it sin at all. The Eighth Commandment, uh, a good name publicly abused, the big idea, justice gives no thought for offending the powerful. Hope you have a good time interacting with the materials and Luther's words. Uh, see you next week.